so welcome back to another book review. So after that last book that just was absolutely horrific to read through and wasted three years of my time, I needed something that I knew was going to just be a nice easy read to decompress with after that. Some nice fluff. So I actually revisited a book that I first read like at least 10 years ago, probably longer ago than that, but uh, it's called Peace, Love, and Baby Ducks by Lauren Miracle, which I know I'm in the minority here, but I, I like her books. Okay, yeah, I know they're YA, but shut up, I like them anyway. But this book totally picked up on a whim the first time that I read it, because I read it um, in its physical format first time, just going to the library and was kind of just looking around for anything that looked interesting, was kind of just aimlessly wandering around looking for what should I check out today? <laughs> and with a title like that, and with a cover like that, I was like, oh, this is coming home with me. <laughs> and looking at my Goodreads records, um, apparently on that first read through, it only took me a week to read it the first time. This time took me three days. And even at that, if I hadn't had other stuff to do, it would have probably been read in a single day. Just saying. It is a very easy read. So this book, it very much encapsulates, like, the teenager experience, but also more so the teenager experience when you have a younger sister who's only a few years behind you, like a couple or a few years behind you in age experience. Having had a sister that's only four years younger than me, I mean, it's slightly more than the gap in the book, but just by this much, and I was still able to relate to it a lot. I feel like, actually, <laughs> rereading it now, it hit harder today than it did back then. Because when I was reading it the first time, I was making the mental comparisons to my one sister that I'm closer in age with. This time when I was reading it, I, for other reasons, was thinking of my other sister, and I was like, oh, shit. Boy, this hits different now. Oh, boy. Basically, the book starts out with the main character, Carly, having gone away for, like, something like six weeks or something to, like, a wilderness retreat, um, and in that amount of time, her sister, for lack of better terms, blossomed and got really pretty, like, overnight, like, just totally grew up into a young lady for, again, lack of better ways of putting it. And seemingly, with every passing day, suddenly she had become the hot sister versus just the little sister. Yeah. Yeah, I know that feeling all too damn well, but, um, there's the whole sibling rivalry aspect that would have been there anyway, but now it's also, like, a power struggle uh, between how the fuck is that fair? Like, God, like, it hits the nail on the head so damn hard, like, holy shit, like, <laughs> I think I was reading it more from just the perspective of general sibling rivalry on the first read-through, but this time I'm like, oh my god, this is like reading about me and Kimmy. Just imagine if the ages were closer. Holy fuck. <laughs> but, um, the whole thing is like a very typical YA novel type of plot line. Like, they're both going to high school, except Carly is the quirky girl, the neo-hippie girl, the, the one that has to be different at all times, that obsesses about classic rock. Gee, I don't know why I gravitate to this book. Nope, not at all. Um, that dresses like a hippie, but of course has seemingly the worst luck in the world. Has a dad who is very overbearing and cares more about getting a good deal than he does about his daughter's welfare. Um... <laughs> saying, but just saying, um, and just days before school starts, takes her to a hairdresser and thinks, oh, he's gonna get a good deal because he'll have the newbies in training do her hair, 
And she butchers it horribly, awfully. And that just mm, hit so close to home. I was like, oh, it's a little too close to the bone for me. Holy shit. Holy shit. But, um, so there is that. So now she's going into school, this new school year, looking like that. But now with the younger sister, who's now the hot sister, just entering high school. And all the attention's on her. And all anyone wants to talk about is her. And how hot the sister is. And this, that, and the other. And she's like, bitch, she's 14, calm down, you're sick. But, um... Yeah, it's like that. It's very much like that. I know that feeling way too fucking well. Even though my sister is like 23 and I still fucking feel that way about her. It's like, knock that shit off. Hell, when some of you guys have left comments about my brother, I get that way about him too. And he's like 30 and I'm like, stop it. He is my baby brother. Knock that shit off. But anyway, um, it's weird being the eldest sibling. It just is. But anyway, um, I digress. So there's just like the whole power struggle in every interaction and that how the dynamics have changed and how it, they used to be like this and now they're drifting apart into different social groups and things and now they're interested in boys or at least one of them is but the boy is not that interested back in her yet while the seemingly perfect one who is, who is literally right there and has been all along. She's not interested in him, of course, because that is just the unwritten law of the universe, is it not? Of course it is. So, it continues to unfold down this path, and a lot of it is almost painfully predictable. Granted, I have read it before, but I mean, honestly, I had no recollection of what went down in this book, so it was kind of like re uh, it was like reading it for the first time, honestly, because I really did not consciously remember any of the plot of this book. But, um, very predictable. So for that, I know some people's reviews of it kind of bitch about that fact, and that, oh my god, it's always the same old story with Laura and Miracle. Da, da, da. I'm like, yeah, but it's endearing the way she knows it. Shut up. I again, I like her books, but... Anyways, <laughs> um, just saying, it goes very, very cliche right down to the wire of, oh, the weekend that the parents go out of the town and say not to throw a big party or anything, so of course you, you know it's gonna happen. Shenanigans, of course, of course there's going to be a big party after the parents said no big party. And it goes back exactly as you would surmise. It's like every teen drama ever. Ever. But, I mean, still, I don't know. Something about the way it's written just hit more realistic than a lot of attempts I have seen if people trying to write these. Maybe that's just my experience. Maybe that's just what I have lived. And in looking at it through that lens, reading this, I don't know. But to me, this one reads far more truthfully than a, than a lot of YA fiction. Than a lot of YA, well, yeah, yeah, YA movies too, but I like it. I think it's cute. I think it's endearing. I think the ending, honestly, m more work should have gone into that because it was very just slapped together, rushed ending where everything was tied a little too neatly to where it was like, that outcome would not have gone down quite like that. This is a little too tidy-tidy. Like, right down to the whole drama of uh, the main character had uploaded her own parody of the Beverly Hillbillies theme song and photoshopped her dad's face into it and rewrote the lyrics to be about him. Uh, and the power struggle of the dad demanding she take it down and she's like, hell no, I'm not gonna take it down. Yeah, and then in, like, the final couple pages of the book, oh, no, it's because he actually got his feelings hurt. Oh, my God, my dad have feelings? I've never seen my dad cry. Okay, Daddy, I'll take it down. Like, I'm sorry. If you had been that hell-bent against taking it down, it would take a lot more than that to feel like you're gonna take it down. Like, that, I felt like, mm, mm, maybe you, I don't know. Not me with my dad, but I mean, maybe you with yours, I don't know, but that part just felt wooden. Same with the way that everything just 
kind of gets slapped together at the end with the two sisters as well. The way in which they go about it, I'm like, uh, you wouldn't fix that much drama like that in, like, one conversation. I'm sorry, that is not how siblings work. That's not how just people work. <laughs> but especially siblings, that is not how that shit works. I mean, it would help. It would be a step in the right direction, but it ain't gonna fix everything in literally one conversation. But, I digress. Those two points aside, I do really like this book. It's really cute. It's a very quick read, if you ever have the opportunity to. I still would give it a four out of five stars. Just that ending, I feel like if they just stretched the book out, just even like a couple chapters more, just to flesh out the ending into a slightly more realistic way would have just been the cherry on the top that would have made it perfect. But I digress. It's still it's still good. I still enjoyed it. But anyways, that is it for this one, my dude. So as usual, you know what to do. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you're not already and you'd like to be, click subscribe, hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload. Leave comments down below. Make sure you're following my social media accounts, my Facebook fan page, my Twitter, my Instagram, my Etsy, everything and more. It's all down below. And if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link has voices down in the description. Anyway, guys, until next time, see ya.